Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, the freezing rain line is working its way from west to east across Kentucky this afternoon, but it could still be several hours before that changeover happens here in the mountains. Meteorologist Evan Hatter begins our severe weather alert day team coverage. Evan? That's right, Steve. We've been watching rain throughout the day today, but our far western counties are now starting to see the cold air beginning to work in. And we are all under some sort of winter product as we head through the nighttime hours. Let's go to the map. As we look right now, the southern part of the area, the southern half of the area under a winter weather advisory. Winter storm warning covers most of the central and northern portions of the area. And Rowan County is under an ice storm warning at the moment. We're also most of us under a flood watch as we continue to get rounds of potentially heavy rain pushing through. I-64 at Moorhead right now just soggy. No freezing rain occurring yet. We're still at 52 here in Perry County, but you notice the cold temperatures are not far away. Many of us in the mid to upper 50s, but you look out to the west, Irvin's at 34, Lexington's at freezing, and Somerset's at 37. So we're seeing that begin to work into the mountains as we speak. Satellite and radar, we're drying out for a moment, but here comes that next round of moisture as it begins to work on in. And you see that freezing line continuing to push further and further to the south and west. And it's something that's been caught up during the day and something we're going to be watching very closely as we head through the nighttime hours. Go ahead and download that WYMT weather app because once we fall below freezing later on tonight, that's when the rain turns to freezing rain and we start to see the issues becoming apparent around the mountains. I'll have the very latest coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. As counties in the northern part of the Big Sandy region prepare for the possible ice accumulation, road crews are playing the waiting game. Officials with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet District 12 say their crews are prepared and ready for the ice, but they will have to attack it head on as it comes. With all the water on the roads from the rainfall, pre-treating them is just not an option. So if the ice comes, they are expecting a long night. Our crews especially in those areas uh, in the northern part of the counties will be out through the night and they will be patrolling and as soon as uh, the winter precipitation starts to begin they'll start treating the roads. Sloan reminds drivers once again staying off the roads through the night is the best way to help the crews do their job and keep everyone safe. We hope to have a live update from our buddy Forbes from Paintsville coming up tonight at 6. It's been four days since the city of Hazard issued a state of emergency due to a water shortage that left thousands with little or no water. WIMT's Dakota Makris is in downtown Hazard with an update on that. I talked with Hazard city manager and mayor earlier today who are hopeful water is back for all by the end of the day. They say crews have been working around the clock trying to get water back into the city's tanks. Mayor Happy Mavellini says the south end of the county should have water by now. City manager Tony Eversole says they are working on getting water to the Grapevine tank on Highway 15. He says those who live near Wendell Ford Airport will get water first. Those who live directly off 15 should already have water. And we're going to come back towards Hazard, turning on each individual haulers. It's just a slow process and I mean, the water's been off four days. It's it's after we get the water restored back to the grapevine tank. I mean, it takes you more than a day to, to get the customers back on. City officials want to remind people not to leave their faucets on overnight when temperatures get cold, which they say will drain tanks quickly. In downtown Hazard, I'm Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. Officials say they are also aware of a fake Facebook page with a similar name and to the city utilities page and they are asking whoever is running that account to stop posting to avoid confusion. The official Facebook page is called City of Hazard Utilities and is posting frequent updates on the situation. We are still seeing historically high prices for both new and used cars this year, and experts predict those prices could stick around for much of 2022. A shortage of parts, limited production, and surging demand for both new and used cars are driving consumers to pay sky-high prices for those few cars that dealerships have available. J.D. Power says the average transaction price for a new car was more than $45,000 last December, up 29% from 2019. 
driving that is some of the shift toward trucks and SUVs and higher contented vehicles. But at the same time, because of this lack of inventory, dealers are not required to discount at all. So when can buyers catch a break? Experts say availability could start to increase as production starts to come back online and the supply of car parts improves. But there is no firm estimate on when that will happen. The head of the Federal Aviation Administration told lawmakers safety is something his agency will not compromise when it comes to the deployment of 5G technology. He and representatives from the airline and wireless industries were in the hot seat today, giving an update on the rollout before a House Transportation Subcommittee. CBS's Natalie Brand has more from Capitol Hill. Lawmakers on the Aviation Subcommittee united in their criticism of the 5G rollout around the nation's airports. This is inexcusable. There's just phenomenal room for improvement. FAA Administrator Steve Dixon testified that concerns were raised years ago that 5G C-band signals can disrupt radio altimeters on aircraft, creating a safety hazard in low visibility situations. While we have avoided significant disruption to commercial aviation, we recognize that some communities and operations have been affected. Payne Field Airport in Washington State was one of those impacted. Flights were temporarily canceled over concerns about 5G and fog. The problem was all of those things coming together in a perfect storm of technology. Several committee members blamed the botched rollout on lack of coordination between the federal agencies overseeing the aviation and wireless industries, something the FAA administrator says is now being worked out. All parties are working together very effectively at this point. We have made great deal of progress and the cooperation continues. The FAA has cleared an estimated 90% of commercial planes to keep flying, but the administrator says testing is still underway and new standards must still be developed, which may not happen until 2023. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The telecommunications industry and wireless providers argue 5G is used safely in Europe but head of the FAA says there is no comparison since the power levels are different and the U.S. system is more complex. Medicare will start paying for at-home COVID-19 tests. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced the move Wednesday. The tests will have to be purchased at participating pharmacies and retailers. The agency plans to release a list of those businesses when the coverage begins. 36 million senior citizens and Americans with disabilities receive health care coverage under the traditional Medicare program. Roughly 28 million are enrolled in Medicare Advantage. A popular brand of salad dressing is being recalled. Conagra brand says it's issuing a voluntary recall for some bottles of wishbone chunky blue cheese dressing and Thousand Island dressing. Both contain egg, which is not stated on the product label. The FDA says people who are allergic to eggs risk serious or life-threatening allergic reactions from these products. There are no reports of illnesses or injuries so far. If you've bought the product, though, you should throw it away. Some bad news for chocolate lovers. Hershey is raising its prices this year. The company's 2022 financial forecast says it is increasing prices to offset higher ingredients and labor costs. The chocolate company hopes the hike will not hurt sales. The candy maker previously raised prices and customers accepted it. Beloved treats like Reese's and Kit Kats are still going strong. Retail sales for the company's top brands grew more than 12% last year. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Thursday. A rough day on Wall Street after a pretty positive week earlier. The Dow closes down today more than 518 points. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from California Wednesday afternoon. The rocket carrying a classified National Reconnaissance spy satellite did not disappoint the senses. Two sonic booms punctuated the launch, much to the delight of spectators. About two minutes into its climb, the first stage of the rocket broke away, returning to the base so it can be reused later on. Some are calling it a major moment in space exploration history. That's one of the things that makes SpaceX so spectacular because that landing is actually was considered an impossibility at one point. And on this day, it was not only possible, it happened just as planned. 
Still to come on first at four, the ice we are expecting later in eastern Kentucky is only part of a larger winter system that is spreading misery nationwide. A look at what it's leaving behind. And we're going to watch freezing rain potentially leave accumulations of ice around the mountains tonight. I'll have the very latest on how much could accrete on the way.